for our Tetrix robot. The first thing we need to do is to make sure our schematic editor is set up so that way our program knows all the components that are hooked up to our robot. So if I click open schematic editor, I need to make sure that I'm on NXT. Um, in this case, I have my ultrasonic sensor in port 2, light sensor in port 3, touch sensor in port 4, um, I have my left wheel and my right wheel on my DC motor controller and I need to make sure that my right wheel is reversed. On my servo controller that is daisy chained to my motor controller, I have one Touchx 180 degree servo. And then for our launcher, uh, we're going to be using the LEGO motors, the NXT motors, uh, to launch the ball. So in um, port 1, I put an NXT motor, and then port 2, um, which is actually port uh, B, because the LEGO motors go into A, B, and C. Um, so the NXT motor 2, which goes in port B, uh, is also hooked up. So I'm going to save and close my schematic editor. And um, I need to click on the programs uh, folder and select a new VI, a new virtual instrument. And I want a VI, virtual instrument, for NXT EV3 target. And I'm going to name it launcher. So then I can minimize my front panel. And on my block diagram, uh, the first thing I want my program to do is to initialize my servo position. Um, so I'm going to right click to get my functions palette and click the push pin to make it stay as a window. Um, I want this to run continuously um, to put my servo into position and then to wait for a button to be pressed on the touch sensor before it moves on to the next part of the program. So I'm going to go to programming, structures, and while loop. So that way my program runs continuously. And inside my while loop, um, I want to put a servo. So under IO uh, advanced motors, I want a move servo function block. And I need to tell my program which port, um, which uh, servo it's going to use. So I need to right click the top node and create a constant to get my initialization box. Uh, I'm going to select in that box the Tetrix 180 degree servo. And if I leave this initialization box inside the while loop, nothing else in my program that's outside the while loop can access that. So I'm going to click and drag to select the initialization box and put it on the outside reconnecting my wire that just disappeared. So that way I can access that initialization box from any part of my program. I need to get my servo position, so I'm going to right click on the position 1 node and create a constant of 128. Um, the next thing I want to do is to have my NXT screen display text. In this case, I want it to display um, for the user to, to press touch to start. So I'm going to do that with um, input, output, and display. And I'm going to right click on the text and I'm create a constant. And then this one is going to say start um, press touch. So that's going to display my NXT to let the user know that they need to press the touch sensor to begin the program. Um, I need to connect my NXT wire for order. And I need something to stop this while loop. Um, so I'm going to go to input output, IO, and sensor. And I want to use my touch sensor to stop the loop. So when it is pressed, it's going to send a yes no to the loop condition and stop my while loop. So I'm going to connect that yes no, that boolean node, 
uh, to the loop condition. And then I'm going to connect my um, text blocks to the touch sensor and the touch sensor to my while loop uh, structure uh, with the NXT wire to determine order. So the remainder of the code is continuously going to run um, to initialize the motors, to follow the line, and to check for the object to be able to launch. Um, so I'm going to put the rest of the code in a while loop. So I need programming, structures, and while loop. And I'm going to drag this while loop out to the right. And I can always resize this later with the blue boxes on the structure. So the first thing I want to do is to initialize my uh, LEGO NXT motors. And my LEGO NXT motors are under input output. And I'm going to go to complete. And under complete, there's LEGO motors. So I want for my LEGO motor to be on. So I'm going to put that down. And I need to tell it which port. So if I right click the port node on the top and create a constant, um, that is going to be in ports A and B. I also need to give this a speed, so a power. So I'm going to right click that power node and create a constant of zero. So that way it's initializing my LEGO motors, but they're not running yet. And connecting my NXT wire through for order. Um, the next thing is I want to print two lines of text on my NXT block. And to be able to do that, I need to use the screen update sub VI. Sub BI and put that down. So this is going to allow me to do two lines of text. It also allows the sonar distance, so the ultrasonic to be read, and then the light sensor value to be read too. It does three things. Um, so I'm going to connect my NXT wire. I'm going to create a constant for line five text. And I'm going to type in searching. And then line six text, I'm going to create a constant and have this one say for target. So that's displayed on my NXT screen. Um, I then want to have my robot uh, follow the line. So I need to do the line follower code, which involves using the light sensor. So I'm going to go input output and sensor and click my drop down to go down to read NXT light. And I want that LED on, so that way I can tell uh, whether my light sensor is plugged in and working. I'm going to connect my NXT wire. And um, for, my light uh, for my light sensor, I need to use that value to determine if my robot's going to go right or left to stay on the line. So since it has choices, um, I'm going to use a case structure. So under programming, structure, and case structure, I'm going to put down a case structure. Um, in the true case, I need to give power to my motor. So I'm going to go input output and move motor. And on the top, I need to right click and create a constant to initialize that motor. I do have two, so I'm going to click the drop down. And in this case, I'm going to choose my red motor as being the left wheel, and my right motor as uh, the my right wheel is the blue motor. And notice that my picture changed to DC motors. Um, once again, if I leave this initialization box inside the case structure, nothing else in my program can access that. So I'm going to click and drag to select just the initialization box. And I'm going to put the initialization box back in the beginning. 
So it's a good habit to have in programming to do all your initializi initializing in the very beginning of your program so you can easily find them. So I'm going to reconnect my wire. And my power, my power wire is brown, whereas my blue wire is for data because servos go by position number, not by power. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a constant for power and speed 1, the red motor. And this one is going to have a power of 30. Um, the blue one, so power and speed 2, I'm going to create a constant of 0 which is going to give my left wheel a power of 30, my right wheel a power of 0, which is going to turn my whole robot to the right. And I'm going to connect my NXT wire all the way through. So then in the false case, my powers need to switch. So I can go to false. I'm going to go to input output. The input down and moves the motors block. It's going to use the same motors as before. So I can go ahead and connect to my power wire. And in this case, my red motor is going to have a constant of 0. And my blue motor is going to have a constant of 30. So that way, uh, my right wheel gets a power of 30. My left wheel gets a power of zero, so it's turning to the left. And I'm going to go ahead and create and connect my NXT wire. And notice that this node is empty because it's not being connected to anything in this case, but it is in the true case. So I need to connect my NXT wire to that node so it becomes solid. So anytime you have an empty node like that, it probably means that it's empty in the other case. I have to have something to choose my case for my case structure. So I'm going to use the light sensor. And I need a comparison. So I need to go to programming, comparison, and I'm going to use a less. So that less, I'm going to take the light sensor value, so the scaled value, and that's going into the X part, so the input. Um, it needs to compare to a number. So my Y part, I'm going to create a constant and make this 40. And then the value of that, so is X less than Y, true or false, that's going to go into my loop condition, or my case selector. So my case selector, that little green question mark, chooses whether to run the true or the false case. So in this case, right now, the program is taking the light sensor value, it's saying, okay, is the light sensor value less than 40, true or false? And it's determining what program to run from that. That will allow me to walk the line, um, my robot to walk the line, but I need to have something uh, that senses if it's getting close to an object. So I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, ultrasonic sensor. So I'm going to go to IO sensor. And I'm going to go down to the drop down and choose read NXT, read NXT ultrasonic. So I'm connecting my NXT wire. I need to tell my program which port my ultrasonic sensor is plugged into. So I'm going to create a constant on the top for the port. And in this case, we have it in port 2. So I need to change the drop down to port 2. And then now I want my robot to be able to choose um, either to run the launch program um, or to be able to just continue uh, walking the line until it finds uh, the object. So since I have choices, I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, case structure. So under Mindstorm Robotics Programming, I'm going to go ahead and choose a case structure um, that I'm going to drag out for the rest of my code inside the while loop. 
Um, to choose true or false from a case structure, I need to use my ultrasonic sensor, but it needs to compare to a value. So I'm going to go to programming, uh, comparison, and I want to choose a less. So that less is going to take the value of the ultrasonic sensor, so the distance. So I'm going to click on distance and feed that into the X part, so the input. It has to be, have something to compare to, so I'm going to create a constant on the Y part of the less and give it a constant of 20. And then the result of that, so is X less than Y, true or false, that is going into my case selector, so that little green question mark. So inside my true case, this is where I want it to initialize the launch sequence. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use my screen update sub BI to display two lines of text on my NXT and to, to tell the user that it has found uh, the object that it's supposed to launch at. So I'm going to go back and just copy my screen update sub BI that I had from before and paste it inside the true part of my case structure. So now I can connect my NXT wire, I can create a constant on line 5 text, and I'm going to type in found, and then for my line 6 text I'm going to create a constant and have the say activate launch. So I want to break the uh, DC motors since it is arrived to the object that it's going to launch at. So I'm going to go ahead and go I.O. input output, move motors. This is the same DC motors that I'm going to use as before. So I can go ahead and connect the top port to the power wire. Now I cannot go inside the case structure to connect the power wire. I have to be outside the case structure or it will give you broken air broken wires. So I'm going to create a constant for the power and speed 1 of 0, and then my blue uh, motor, power and speed 2, is also going to share that 0. So I'm just going to connect those two wires together. Uh, following through my, with my NXT wire for order, um, next thing I want to do is have my robot wait for a second before it um, powers on its LEGO NXT motors. So I'm going to go to input output IO and put down a wait for block and I'm going to create a constant for the time of one second so that way it waits for a second. I'm connecting my NXT wire through and now I want to go ahead and give power to my LEGO NXT motors. So to do that I need to go to input output uh, complete Lego motors and then motor on. I need to tell uh, my program what port those Lego motors are in, so I'm going to create a constant on the top and these are in ports A and B. I'm going to connect my uh, NXT wire and I'm going to give this a power, so I'm going to right click the power node and I want to give it full power, so I'm going to give it 100. After it turns the LEGO motors on, I want to wait again before it initializes the next part of the sequ launch sequence. So I'm going to go to input output, and then wait for, and I'm going to have it wait for 3 seconds this time. So I'm going to create a constant of 3, and connecting my NXT wire. So to make the ball launch, um, I need to use my servo arm to lower and push the ball into the LEGO NXT motors. Um, and I want it to do this slowly, so I need to go ahead and use a for loop, which is going to allow me to slowly move the servo position. So under Mindstorm Robotics and Programming, uh, Structures, I'm taking a for loop. 
this for loop allows me to run the program inside for a certain number of times. So I'm going to create a constant at this loop account, and I'm going to give it 52, which means it's going to run this program 52 times before it moves on to the next part of the program. Um, this is going to control my servo position. So I'm going to go to input output and advanced motors and move servo. This servo is the same servo that we've been using all along. So I can go ahead and click the top node to initialize it. And I'm going to go back and find uh, the last time I used a servo. So I can either go back to the very beginning and click the initialization box right here, or I can connect, connect to the wire also. Um, I need to get that servo position, and in this case I want it to slowly move to position. So to be able to do that, I need to use um, programming. And in this case, I'm going to go to programming and numeric, and I'm going to put down an add function block. And I also want the increment, so the plus one. So the order that you wire these is important to maintain the, t the data type. So I'm going to go from my loop iteration, which iteration just means to repeat over and over. That loop iteration is keeping the count of how many times this for loop has gone. So that is going to go into the increment. And the increment is just going to take and add one over and over and over and over. Um, that plus one then, that increment, is going into the Y part of my um, addition, my add function block, and it needs something to add to, so I'm going to create a constant for the X part, and have a constant of 128. That is going to determine my servo position, so I'm going to click the result of the addition, and put that into position one. So what this is going to do is it's going to put the servo position into uh, uh, position 128, and then it's going to add one over and over and over 52 times. So in the end, I should be at 100, position 180 for my servo, because 128 plus 52 is 180. So I'm going to connect my NXT wire for order. And after it moves to position, I would like it to, my robot to wait. So I'm going to go ahead and go to I.O. and put down a wait for block. And I'm going to change my time, so my wait for time, to milliseconds. I'm going to give this a constant of 10. So I'm going to have it wait for 10 milliseconds, which is not a long time. I'm going to connect my NXT wire through. And remember, any time your node looks empty like this, you're going to right click, go to tunnel mode, and take the last value. So once I have my, move, my arm move once, so move down to press the ball into position, I would like the arm, the servo arm, to move back up to be prepared for the next launch sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and drag out my case structure to give myself more space. I would like my program to wait in between, so I'm going to put another wait for lock down and create a constant of one second. And then the next thing we're going to do is have another for loop. It's going to work exactly the same, but this time it's going to move my servo back to its original position. So I'm going to go to Programming, Structures, and For Loop. I'm going to create a constant on the loop count and give that 52, which means it's going to run that program 52 times. I need to put in my servo motor, so input output, advanced motors, 
and move servos. And this servo is the same servo as last, so I'm going to click the top and connect to the wire for the last servo. Now I cannot go inside to the for loop and do it. I have to be on the outside of the for loop. So I'm going to connect my NXT wire. And in this case, I want to use the same process as before, but except for an add, I'm going to use a subtract. So I need to go to programming and numeric. I'm going to use a subtract function block. And I'm still going to use that increment, so that plus one. So that will let me go slowly um, back to position. So I'm going to go ahead and wire my increment to uh, my loop iteration. So that's keeping count for how many times my for loop has gone. Um, that value is going to go into the Y part of my subtract. And then it has to have something to subtract from. So I'm going to create a constant at the X part of the subtract of 180. That value, so 180 minus 52, is going to take um, the servo and move that back to position. So really, if I'm taking 180 minus 52, I'm back to my original position of 128. And it's doing that slowly by using this increment. So using the number 1 over and over and over. So 180 minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and so on. All the way down, 100, uh, all the way down 52 times to get to position 128. So once again, I want my uh, robot to pause after it moves the servo. So I'm going to go to input output and put down a wait for block. I'm going to change that to milliseconds for my wait for time. And I'm going to create a constant of 10. So it's going to wait for 10 milliseconds. Connecting my NXT wire all the way through, making sure to stop at each function block. And then once again, if your node is empty um, and it says auto index tunnel, right click it, go to tunnel mode, and take the last value. Right. So now I want to stop my Lego motors. So I'm going to go to input output, complete, Lego motors. And I'm going to go ahead and use the motor on. Because for that, all I have to do is create a constant of zero. I need to choose my ports, so I'm going to create a constant and have this be in ports A and B. And then I'm connecting my NXT wire for order. So the final thing I want my robot to do is to hold still and wait for the detected object to be moved further away for it, from it so it can start uh, again. So to achieve this, I'm going to use a while loop to run continuously. So I need to expand out my case structure a little bit. So programming, structures, and while loop. Inside the while loop, I want to take my move motors, so input output, move motors, and I need to tell it which motors I'm working with. So if I click the top of the move motors function block, I can go back and find the last move motors that I used, last DC motors, okay, which would be right here. You could also go back to the beginning and connect directly into the initialization box, so the left wheel, right wheel. And once I click that power wire, now I have two DC motors. And in this case, I want them to break. So I'm going to give them, create a constant of zero for the red motor. And then connect my blue, my power and speed motor two, to that zero also to share it. I'm going to connect my NXT wire for order. And I want to display on my NXT screen the status of the program. So I'm going to use my screen update sub VI again, and I'm going to copy and paste that. So 
So for line 5 text, I'm going to create a constant. And this is going to say to continue. And then my line 6 text, I'm going to create a constant. And this one is going to say move target. So connecting my NXT wire. And I need to have something stop this while loop. So in this case, I want um, this while loop to stop when the robot senses that an object has moved away from it. So moved further than 25 units away. So I'm going to go ahead and use a comparison. So programming comparison. And I'm going to choose a greater. I'm going to take the sonar distance and connect that into the export. Has to have something to compare to, so I'm going to create a constant for the Y part. And that's going to be 25. And the result of that, so is X greater than Y? True or false? So it's a Boolean value. That's going to connect into my loop condition, which is going to determine when my while loop stops. So the last thing I need to do, and as you can see up here, I have a broken arrow. If I double click on the while loop right here, conditional terminal is not wired. It shows me that my entire while loop, this big one, has nothing stopping it. There's nothing connected to this loop condition right here. So I want my NXT buttons to stop my program. So I'm going to go to input output and sensor. And I'm going to put that down outside the case structure, but inside the big while loop still. I'm going to go to my drop down and go read brick buttons. So now it looks like my NXT buttons. And I'm going to connect that Boolean port, that yes, no, to my loop condition. So this is going to stop my program when the NXT buttons are pressed. So then I'm going to go ahead and save, and then once I connect to my NXT in my Choose NXT, NXT screen, then I can click the Deploy button to go ahead and uh, send the program to my robot. If you have any issues, please let your teacher know so that way they can help you.